This session is about manufactured boards, so I'll be talking about what manufactured boards are, the benefits of using manufactured boards, perhaps over uh, hardwoods and softwoods, and talking about the different manufactured boards that you might you know, uh, come into contact with or encounter in your studies. So, manufactured boards, uh, unlike natural timber, which obviously comes directly from trees, are manufactured. They go through a range of processes that turn the sort of natural tree into a board. Now, why is it that we do this? Well, uh, ultimately, trees, for a start, they, they grow and they are a natural product. So, being a natural product, there, there are internal problems with that. We can't guarantee that the product is consistent. So, unlike a piece of polymer where the, the material will be the same all the way through, a tree might have knots and uh, a grain that you might be familiar with, like wood grain makes it look nice. Um, that basically mean that certain areas of the wood may have slightly different properties to others. The other thing, being a natural product, is it has a lot of moisture. Now, trees, if you've watched uh, any videos or understood anything about uh, wood, they go through a, um, a seasoning process which takes this moisture out because ultimately if we leave lots of water in a tree or in, in a piece of timber, it's likely to bend and twist and warp. So it won't be a, a good product for us to manufacture. Now, manufactured boards, because they are made often of either wood fibres, in the case of MDF and chipboard and things like this, or they're plywood to increase properties, they've already gone through this sort of seasoning process, but more importantly, they're mixed with other uh, chemicals. So in the case of MDF, we've got a mixture of uh, wood fibres and resins that bond the board together. Now, this produces a much more consistent product, and it allows us, as manufacturers, um, to basically know what we are getting when we order a product. So unlike if we bought a piece of pine, for example, which if we store it incorrectly, it could twist and bend, or if we um, notice there's, there's defects in the wood, such as knots where branches were, we know with a piece of MDF that every part of that MDF will have very similar properties. It will be quite easy to machine, it will be quite easy to cut and shape and sand, it will have a consistent surface finish, and it will come in probably a stock size, okay? So a stock size and form that we can use it in. So generally manufactured boards come in um, uh, boards which are 2,440 millimetres by 1,220 millimetres or in, in old terms 8 foot by 4 foot sheets okay and we know what we're getting with these boards we can also um, specify a thickness so you know quite commonly the boards come in 3, 6, 9, 12 millimetres so it becomes very easy as a manufacturer um, to actually produce these these materials for people and as a person who wants to use these materials we know exactly what we're getting so we know um, uh, what we're buying um, and obviously these products are therefore easier to store we make it it makes it easier for me to specify the product so if I'm kitting out um, a room using these boards I know exactly how many to buy and what thickness they're going to be so it makes things a lot lot easier okay now the different types of manufactured boards that you might come into contact with in your studies are high density fiber board which is commonly called hardboard now this is a, a, like a brown colored board there's one surface face a very smooth face on one side and on the back there's a sort of like um, a, a textured pattern now you might have seen this in uh, the backs of furniture so um, it's not a very uh, attractive material but they sometimes use it on the backs of wardrobes and the backs of cupboards and things just to give a surface finish and to kind of seal the product off okay you probably won't see it um, being exposed or in, in a purpose where aesthetics is important so you won't see it as a tabletop or anything like this but it's used for those purposes now MDF it's likely to, you're to be very familiar with or medium density fiber board okay this is the uh, material that's very very versatile again like most manufactured boards it's very very easy to machine so you can drill it cut it shape it very very easily and it produces quite a good uh, finish it's also quite easy to, to cut so it's, it's quite easy to shape and stuff with these these tools okay um, MDF because it's got such a smooth finish you might have used it for the purpose of making molds for vacuum formings or castings for example and it's also used um, as a substrate for materials so a substrate is basically a material that goes underneath other materials and this is obviously used because it's got that stability we know exactly the thickness and the size and it's, it's going to be a 
set set um, uh, stock size, for example, for us to use. But it's not that attractive. So, if we want to use it for uh, applications like furniture or tabletops or worktops, for example, we might put a finish over the top. So the substrate is the material underneath. We can use MDF as a substrate. We can also use chipboard and. Um, plywood and things like this okay but as that substrate it's quite good because it's very smooth on the top it's got a very smooth surface finish it's very flat so it's easy to glue another material on the top so we can apply laminates which might look more attractive or more hard wearing or um, improve the sort of um, uh, the vapor barrier or the uh, permeability of the uh, material uh, or we could cover it with veneers so we could get strips of um, hardwood maybe oak or teak or something and put them over the top of a cheaper uh, manufactured board like MDF so we get all the properties of the MDF the flatness the smoothness the uniform size but we also get an attractive wood grain and it makes the product look more expensive and more luxurious for the consumer okay chipboard as I mentioned before is another material that you might notice of um, with MDF medium density fiber board you've obviously got um, quite small fibers you can't really detect the fibers but in chipboard as it implies it's made up of little chips I think the uh, the surface it looks a little bit like Weetabix for example it's quite a rough grainy surface okay it's sometimes called low density fiber board as well and again this is often used as a substrate to go under things like kitchen worktop so if you've got a kitchen worktop at home that has maybe a laminate on the top if you looked underneath that laminate you would probably find there is a chipboard layer underneath being used as the substrate okay now chipboard often because it's it's got good compression uh, compressive strength it's often used for sort of subfloors as well so you might notice that um, certain buildings have been kitted out with uh, chipboard uh, floors that go under the the backs of carpets and things like this so we're not just going to have a chipboard floor and that will be the the surface finish the final finish but you can use it underneath uh, carpets you can use it underneath attractive laminates or solid wood flooring and stuff like this and it just gives that nice stable flat surface to uh, go on to now plywood is another material now this is slightly different as a manufactured board to the others because it's not really made up of small particles or um, uh, chips as in the case of chipboard it's actually made of like thin veneers of uh, real wood material either soft or hardwoods depending on the application that are glued together um, to basically form one board now because um, the grains go in one direction what they do with plywood is they glue the grains at adjacent angles so you'll have one uh, grain going in a horizontal direction and the next ply or the next layer will be stuck underneath with resins and the grain will be going in the opposite direction sort of horizontally okay and they keep doing this you can obviously have multiple plies you might have three or five different layers of plywood all layered up now by plotting these uh, grains at adjacent angles or at 90 degrees to each other this increases the tensile strength of the product quite incredibly so you can use it for purposes where the product is under a lot of tension the application that I always like to use because it's quite familiar is like a skateboard deck because obviously you're going to be jumping on a skateboard you're going to be applying a lot of force as you do tricks and things like this or as you push it along and it needs that tensile strength if we made uh, a skateboard deck out of chipboard or MDF the first time we we on it or jumped on it it's very likely it would just snap in the middle but because these grains are aligned it applies a lot more strength now the final one I'm going to talk about is OSB or oriented strand board or sometimes it's called sterling board this is a company that obviously makes oriented strand board that's quite popular and this is not used for many again aesthetic properties because it's made of like large chips of wood um, the only application I, I see this being used as quite a lot is basically for shuttering so you'll see maybe new buildings uh, appearing uh, in various places around the the world or in, in your locality for example and what they often do is they need a boarding that's quite cheap and quite resistant to moisture and things like this to put up to basically keep uh, the public away so temporary fencing I suppose and things like this an oriented strand board does this quite well it's quite a strong board again it's water resistant but um, just like um, chipboard it's also used as a subfloor as well or it can be used underneath roofs so if you're using it as a substrate you just need a flat layer of uh, material that's got quite a good compressive strength and it's resistant to moisture in this case oriented strand board can be a good choice for this particular application now that's about the end of the video for today. Please look through the test questions and see if you've remembered everything from the video.